You're listening to Espresso Jams, short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, technology, and entrepreneurship. If you're just starting out on your business adventure or you're a seasoned business professional, I'm sure you'll find value in these short conversations. Espresso Jams is brought to you by Apexable, providing the tools, insights, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Espresso Jams. Today, I'm talking with Katia Rave. And if I, I hope I pronounced that right, sometimes. Yes. The, all right. The, the accent there on the, e, on the E there still confuses me at some level. But Katia Rave is a leadership and business coach, and she is also the author of three books. And um, it's such a pleasure to have you here, Katia. Welcome to Espresso Jams. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. What a, what a pleasure to be on, on your show this morning. It's great. And we've known each other for quite some time now. Um, personally, physically, we've, we've been in the same room, right? And um, in the last two years, we've seen each other on screen, right? Yes, yes. And I think, you know, you were, you were, uh, I used to have a show, so uh, you were also on, on my show. So I think it's, yes. it's, it's great when we, when we know each other too. You yes, know? yes. And I understand you recently moved, so you're not hailing from the Raleigh area anymore, are you? No, I am still in North Carolina, but we are right outside of Ocean Island. We moved to the beach. We are enjoying this gorgeous, gorgeous weather and having the ocean. And it really supports us to be, um, to be very creative into what we're doing. Oh, so you're finding inspiration by being close to the beach. Very, very much so. I was born actually as I was born in France and uh, and by the water. And I don't think I realized how much the water inspired me until I moved away from the water. Mm -hmm. And I always say, then I, I will go back. And with with my business, I feel like, you know, I, I coach full time. So there is there is a certain reward about being around the water and, and seeing it just just to recharge and to be inspired, to be creative. Yes, I, I also find inspiration by the waters. I lived in the water in North Carolina. I also lived by the water in Italy, where I was two blocks away from the water, so I could walk to the beach, and it was absolutely beautiful. I'd love to go there, and I always wanted to be sure. I, I wasn't one of those persons who lived by the water, but would go weeks without seeing the water. You know, there are people who live in Sneeds Ferry, which, and I'm sure there are people who live in Wilmington, where they're five, ten minutes from the beach, and they don't see the beach for months and months. Yeah, I have I have a friend, a friend of mine who lives in Florida, and I was like, oh my gosh, do you go every day? Like we pretty much see the the water every day. We go like we go walk on the beach, and like even at lunchtime, sometimes I just need like a, you know, and I just. I just go. It takes me, you know, five minutes to drive there and and I'm there for 15 minutes and I'm back. I mean, it's it's a very easy pick me up, you know. Yes. Oh, that's great. That is great. Because as coaches, we also need to be inspired. We also need inspiration. Isn't very that true? So. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do and, and how you help your clients. So I'm a business coach, business and leadership coach, and I really help entrepreneurs to make more money, to understand what step that they are in and what to do. I give them the strategy on how to operate their business. So at the end of the day, they have a message. They know uh, they know how to communicate because usually this is the biggest thing that we see is, you know, people have great things to sell but they don't know where is their ideal client. They don't have a concise message and they don't know how to sell. So this is basically what we teach. So at the end of the day, they make more money. They have a concise message. They know how to get on stage. They know how to speak and, um, and really to communicate what, you know, what kind of pain do they resolve for their client? What kind of pain they resolve? So their solution to the problem. Correct, correct. And that's it. Like, you know, a, lo a lot of entrepreneurs have great ideas and they come up with these amazing things. Mm. But if you're not solving a problem in the world, nobody's going to buy it. Right, 
Right. I agree with that 100 percent. It's so important to understand the problem of your ideal market and be able to articulate it as well or even better than your client. Yeah. And, and being, being very concise, like, you know, I mean, so many of us have gone to a networking event and we have walked away with, you know, like from someone going like, what do they do? Like, you know, we all have had this experience of, you know, walking away from someone, we listen to them for 10 minutes and we still don't know what they do. How can you communicate in, you know, 15 seconds? I mean, I told you, I say, hey, I help, you know, entrepreneur to make more money, to have a concise message, to understand the avatar and to know how to sell. I mean, I don't need three hours for that. Right. You know? No, no, no. You need very, very um, short time. And as yeah. I understand it, if you are a true expert in a subject, you can explain it quickly to a fourth grader. That's right. That's right. Use language and everybody can, you know, can can understand. And and it, it, I love that you said that because I always tell my clients, like, could you say that to a kid? Would they understand what you what you do? And a lot of time, you know, when we use words who are way, way too big and it's like, no, just stay simple. Yeah. Stay away from big words and lexicon in your particular yes. industry. Yeah. Yeah. Very yes. Much so. And especially, you know, I have to throw this out there for everyone who's listening. If you have a, a long something in your industry and you condense it into four letters or five letters, um, a lot of time, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's we so do. And then they, they use one word, right? We, yes, we'll just take the reese and we'll do this with it. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it, but it's so true. But it, we go back to communication, right? So many, you know, and this is something then, you know, we, this is where we use leadership into, you know, being an entrepreneur. It's how do you communicate with every style? How do you communicate with every personality? You know, in most of the world, there is four, you know, we distinguish between four different personality. How do you communicate in a way that, you know, then everybody will understand. What kind of word, what kind of energy do you put in? I mean, are you considering then you have people with different personality in front of you or are you just talking for the people who are just like you? Well, then you limit your market. Right, right. Yeah, when I spoke from stage, I was always clear to use the, um, the auditory, the visual. So I would say, can you see what I mean? Or I should, or I, another time I would say, do you hear what I'm saying or can you hear the sound of the ocean as I describe the sailboat going through the waves and yeah. trying to get the, the visual, the hearing, um, smell is a little bit more difficult for me. <laughs> can you smell the salt air of the ocean? Maybe yeah, that, that would work, right? Yeah, but it would. We, you talk about different personalities and communicating to different personalities. Can you expand on that a little bit? Sure. So, you know, some, someone like me, I, you know, I'm someone who is full of energy, like pretty much the moment I open my eyes in the morning until at night. I have the energy going. I am go, go, go. And, you know, the, the, the style of people that I attract, you know, of course, is my style. Now, someone like you, when I talk with you, like the way I came in on camera, I tame down a little bit who I am fully because I can be too much and I can scare people, especially people who are more analyzers. Like you're someone who's very, you know, one, two, three, four <laughs> stages. So I knew, you know, from our present, you know, our um, uh, previous, uh, I, I remembered your personality and I also came on knowing then, uh, I get to analyze how is the person across from me and who are the listeners. So, for example, I don't know if you know this, I changed my glasses right before we went on camera. Oh. I, have a re I had a regular pair of glasses and I changed to be on camera because this is appealing also to the people exactly like me, even if I don't have the energy. Even if I'm taming my energy, I'm still going to appeal because of the glasses versus the other ones that I had on before. So I really match a lot of the things that I do when I present to be able to appeal to everybody. There's also the language that I use. 
Yes, I really like that because I, I understand that, you know, I lived in three continents. Um, I, I speak three languages. And, and I know you speak a number of languages, too. When I'm on stage uh, in Portuguese, in Brazil, and I'm speaking Portuguese, people tell me that my personality changes. Of course. Of course. It, it does like when you know, you know if I speak if I speak French I am very you know I'm also very different like my hands are everywhere like everything take over <laughs> already you know like I'm careful on camera this is something then you know then I am very aware then I speak a lot so sometimes like you know people only see my hands and at the beginning you know I saw them that was you know that was something uh, on stage it doesn't really matter but on virtual stage when your hands are in front of the camera you know that so you you get to to really adjust basically but yeah when and cultures are different when i speak right. you know like you what you were saying your energy is different when you speak a different language yes but the culture is different you know i dress very different on a stage in europe than i do in america mm. yes yes i have my, had my stage suit and i had one that was bright green because yeah. it, you have to project a distance right. and and it's different on camera, sure, sure. And I, I only use that suit on stage. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I, I'm the same. I have, you know, I have a stage outfit. Then, you know, it's yeah. pretty much, you know, it's like when I'm on stage, this is what I wear because it's the same thing. We get to, we get to project and we get to appeal and yet staying authentic to who we are. Yes. Yes. So leadership and leadership is usually thought of as leading other people and being a leader in front of other people. But a lot of entrepreneurs are solopreneurs. Yeah. How does leadership, um, I, I'm, I'm losing my words here. How does, how does being an entrepreneur, a solopreneur and leadership, what, what is important with that relationship? So one of the big thing then I realized is, um, to be, a, you know, to, we all know to be a leader, you know, to lead other people, like what you say, you need to lead yourself first. And most of the time, people are very good at leading others, but they're not very good at leading themselves. It's, you know, talk the talk, but don't walk the walk. Hmm. In entrepreneurship, it's the opposite. In entrepreneurship, you really get to understand how do you lead yourself? How, do, how are you in integrity with your own word? Are you showing up when you say you were going to show up for yourself? Or are you letting everything else take over? Most of us who are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, you know, we, we work at home. Yeah. How do you get, do you get distracted? Uh, today I'm going to do this. At the end of the day, it's still not done. Well, that's leadership. The problem is people don't see it that way, mm. right? They see then, oh yeah, oh, you don't understand. I need to do a load of laundry. I needed to cook. Or I saw then, you know, it's like, if you were really taking seriously your work, like you were getting paid, tell all of my clients, I want you to show up at work, like you're getting paid $500,000. Mm. Because that's the possibilities. Yes. If you really show up. Yeah, right? I like so, that. Yeah. Yeah. So how are you going to show up? I show up in my office, whether I'm on camera or not, I show up dressed up. I have earrings, I have makeup on because, well, I am the CEO of the company. The fact that there is, you know, I mean, my, you know, my staff is, is not really uh, one person than, um, who's in the same house than me who's, who's on my staff. But beside that, I, it's for me. Right. How do I show up for me? Yeah, That's I think integrity. It, it's so important. And you, you want to feel professional. Correct. And I need to dress up a little bit. Um, I might have a sweatshirt on during the day, for example, if I'm not on camera, but I, I need to feel at least like I'm dressed, I'm ready to go, I'm in my element, and I've been working from home since 1985. Yeah. Not all the time, but most of my work life I've been working from home, and I have found that I wear a lot of hats. I'm the leader, I'm the planner, I'm the doer. I'm my own coach sometimes. I'm not very good at that. That's why I have another coach for coaching me. I'm good at coaching others, you know, and all that stuff. So, but, you know, my dogs will distract me sometimes. Mm. But when I'm in my office and, and my wife is next door, she's in her office, um, I often don't see her except at lunch 
but maybe when we walk the dogs during the day and when we're thinking about dinner and after, you know, the work day is over. So we yeah. really have to be disciplined there. Yeah, discipline and, you know, time management is yes. leadership. It's, I mean, there's, you know, finances is leadership. Yes. You know, we know so many, so many business owners, you ask them where, you know, they t they're so good about telling me where they want to be. I want to make, you know, I want to be, be at six figure. At the, it's pretty much the answer of everybody. I want to be at six figure. I'm like, oh, okay, well, where are you at now? That's where we can see what's in the gap. I don't know. Well, if you don't know your numbers, this is a part of leadership. Yes. Yes. You know, how can you get to a certain point if you don't know where you start? Right. And all of this is a huge part of entrepreneurship. It's it's not, you know, no matter how much I'm going to give you the strategies or the next step, if you don't put it in place, if you don't have the time management, if you don't have the rigor, the integrity, what's your own word, if you're getting distracted all the time, then no matter how many strategy I give you, if you don't implement, right. we won't get there. Right. I see. I see so many things online and so many things I get um, in my, my email that are talking about processes and systems, but they don't talk about implementation. Yes. And you can fill up your brain. You can fill up your, your screen and your documents with all these things, but they, don't for, they forget about the implementation. Like I know yeah. people who collect PDFs and they collect mm -hmm. eBooks and, and they've got a whole stack of them that they've never read. Correct. And, and, and even, even I love that you said that because even if they read it, there's a difference between reading it, getting the information and having a plan. Yes. You know, a lot of time they have the wish. They have the wish. They want, they're like, oh yeah, I wish I could get there, but they're not willing to do the work who goes with it. And I think that's the difference between a successful entrepreneur and, you know, someone who's still, you know, are you hiring a coach? Are you getting, are you really getting there? Are you doing the work? Or are you just getting yourself busy doing things who are not money generating That's and right. not implementing like what you just said? That's right. Busyness mm -hmm. is not business. Not that. <laughs> so yeah, we, we have to be, we have to have that leadership hat. Mm -hmm. And then so. for a solopreneur, especially one that's just starting out, they need that, um, that, that doer hat because you've got to work in your business and you've got to work on your business. Yeah. And, and those are two different things. They are very different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not always easy because sometimes, you know, the, the, the old saying is if you put your nose to the grindstone, the only thing you get is a ground up nose. You, you've got to lift up. You've got to you've got to go to the ocean and look out far in the ocean and see the ship sailing and using the wind. And you have to see that long perspective. Yeah, and I, I think that's that. What what you know, goals are not just wishes. And how, <coughs> excuse me, how do you implement your goals? I lo I love the 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 ship i mean for, so for us in our company we don't work the last week of the month the last week of the month is only creativity mm. so nobody would dare to send me an email or anything or text or because the last week of the month it's where i am on the beach and writing so i'm writing my fourth book right now or i'm seeing something like you said like i like the other day i saw a shrimp boat and they, you know, looked like they were stuck. And the way the boat was acting and reacting in the ocean gave me a huge perspective mm -hmm. on how to help a client. I was like, oh my gosh, this is genius. Yeah. Wrote it down. And so, so things can come to you, you know, when you, when you are also into these, oh, let me look at a different perspective. Yes. This, this is how you grow. Yes, and you have to take that time. I love that you take the last week of the month off. And, and I am very, I, I'm not at a point where I take it off completely, but I take very few appointments um, the last week of the month. I try and use that for the creativity, for the, mm -hmm. for the recreation that I like to pronounce recreation. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, we need that time. Um, we do, uh, and just to read, and like, I, you know, this is my time to read, because 
we know we have this, the three week we work, we work fully on our client on, you know, we're putting an event uh, in the fall It's going to be a two day event for, you know, not just for clients. So we're so busy with that and delivering to our client and continuing, you know, the business, then there's no time really uh, then al allowed, you know, to read because, and I don't feel bad about it because I know that my last week, this is where, okay, I have these three books and that's what I'm going to be reading on the last week. So it's, it's, a, it's a way of continuing growing as well. So you're taking leadership in a way and you're planning out your time. So, you know, you've got time in those three weeks to do what needs to be done in those three weeks. And you've got time to do what needs to be done also in that last week. Yes, yes, very, very much so. We, we plan and, and we, we coach our client. Everything is 90 days. So we get to achieve goals in 90 days. We don't look at the year. We just look at 90 days. So everything gets condensed also on three weeks a month. Yes. <clears throat> so how do you get to do everything that you say you were going to do? Again, leadership, right? right? How you say you're going to do something, when you say you were going to do something, and with who, and all of these part is so important. And then you had the last, Last week is really just, you know, whatever, whatever you want. I mean, for, for us, it's half fun, half, you know, like our writing, our mm -hmm. reading, our kind of whatever we want to really whatever, whatever yeah. we want to do. Yeah. Right. Now, when I talk <clears throat> with clients and we talk about everything they want to do and they put it all on a list, the next step is to see what we can, what we don't need to do, what is not a priority right. for now. And the not do list um, is also <clears throat> important. And the postpone list, Some, sometimes it's the most productive time because the client comes away thinking, oh, I was so overwhelmed with this huge list. And now it's just three or four things that I need yeah. to focus on. And support. I think support. I wouldn't be, we wouldn't be where we are today if I didn't have support. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I have now three people on my staff. Right. And uh, one of them being my husband. And uh, and it's just it, it's huge because I am truly now just, the, you know, I'm I'm the face of the company and I deliver. Those are my two. I am the creator, the behind the scene. I, you know, like where I create and then they do. And, you know, I tell them this is what it's going to look like and I pass it along. And this is, I mean, today I'm on three podcasts, wow. right? So, and, but that's it. How do I condense also hmm. days where this is all I'm going to do? Because, well, I'm on a roll. I have a way of thinking was very different than when I coach client. Hmm. I have days for coaching clients I have days when you know I appear on shows and mindset is very different yes yes of course so this has been a great conversation Katya um, thank you now for our listeners today what what can you give them as a takeaway that they can implement and and, and do what would be the one thing today uh the one thing that I would tell them is make a schedule have a daily schedule I mean you know we have uh, I'm going to show you mine of yesterday. I have a schedule. Mm. I'm going to show you, you know, mine of today of the five most important thing who gets to be done today. So those, I do not leave my office until these five things are done. It's as simple as that. That's excellent. You've got to be the leader of your time. Here you go. And, uh, and then I know, you know, at 9.30, you know, 9.30, 10, I had Joe. Then, you know, after like in between the shows, I wrote down the five things that I need to do when I'm going to do them. So they're already on my schedule. Yeah. It's like it's an appointment. It's an appointment with me. Yes. And that's the most and, important. Yeah. And I think, you know, if, if the listeners could really take it on to have a schedule, you know, whether it's on your calendar or, I mean, for me, it's on paper, um, you know, it's that just saves you. Right. Right. And I, I sure appreciate you blocking out the time to talk with me and, and provide yeah. some value to our listeners. I Thank really you for having that. me. Now, if someone wants to learn more about you and your business, what's the best way to get in touch with you? The, uh, the best, best place is to go on our website. And I am a texter. So I actually give my phone number. So my number is 919 
5330. And you can go on every, any single uh, social media under Katia Rave or Ravi, Katia, K A T I A R A V E dot com. And, um, and then just, you know, just found us on Facebook, Instagram. We, we're everywhere. Just send a message and we'll get back to you. Okay, great. And can you c- repeat your phone number one more time for our listeners? Yes, 919-308-5330. And you can just text, hey, I saw you on Joe's, you know, podcast this morning. And, you know, you know, I could, you know, if you want one of those worksheets, I'll give you one of those worksheets. Anything, anything that you can really take today to move yourself forward. Okay. That's a win. Great. Yeah, that's a win. That's so good. So nice. Thanks. Katia, once again, it has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me, Joe. As usual, it's always a pleasure to, to talk with you. Thank you. Always good. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Thank you for listening to Espresso Jams. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on your preferred channel. Never miss another episode. If you'd like more business tips on technology, entrepreneurship, and doing better, you can find me on LinkedIn at Joe Matz, that's J-O-E-M-A-T-Z, or go to my website, apexable.com, that's apex-able.com. I'm your host, Joe Matz, wishing you an awesome day.